Hi, my name is Colton, and today I will be reviewing the movie The Smartest Guys in the Room for our Ethics in Accounting class. The Smartest Guys in the Room is an actual story based upon the scandal and fraudulent activities that occurred at Enron. And it was actually based on a book that came out in 2003. The movie came out in 2005. And it opens up with the founding of Enron in 1985. And about two years after Enron was founded, they got in a little bit of trouble uh, because two of their traders were gambling in the oil business. And it was found that they were taking money and sending it to offshore accounts. And it nearly actually destroyed the company. And even after it was internally discovered, the founder of Enron, Kenneth Lay, reportedly told the two brokers to keep making me millions. Now, after the whole scandal was figured out and Enron, Enron was nearly wrecked, they put a stop to it. But Kenneth Lay said that he had never said those words and actually got off the hook. Uh, later on, he hired a man by the name of Jeffrey Skilling, who was considered an innovator of the time. He was a very intelligent man and had an actor business. However, his only condition in starting at Enron was that they would be able to use mark-to-marketing accounting. Now, the problem with mark-to-marketing accounting is that it allowed Skilling to make uh, records of revenue that had never existed. Basically, it was the early recognition of revenue for projects that ended up failing in the future or were not nearly as profitable as they had initially anticipated they would be. Skilling also imposed what he called Darwinian, uh, a worldview. Basically, it's somewhere, it's based upon the Darwin worldview, only the strong survive. Well, in his case with Enron, it was only the best employees get to stay. At the end of every quarter, they would take the 15 least productive employees and actually fire them. Now, this put a lot of pressure on the accountants and other employees to continue making vast amounts of money for the organization. And with all that pressure put on them, they didn't exactly think to do it fairly. And so it wasn't exactly, a, no one cared as much when they would discover that their stock prices were really inflated due to the fact that they'd been recognizing revenue early and they weren't exactly about going about things ethically because they wanted to stick with the company because the company was on the rise. They were attempting to rapidly expand, get into new markets. And the biggest problem with all of these views is while it created productive employees, the pressure provided by it was not allowing them to have an ethical standpoint within the company. Uh, there was problems with the auditing team as well. So many internal auditors were also external auditors for the organization that when Enron's external audit came around, they fully expected to pass it due to the fact that they had already been audited internally by the same organization. Now, as that organization, it would be difficult to say that they had already gone through everything, but then when they come back, they fail them, they would have a lot of upset customers. And so that was really a letdown on the auditing side. And then there's a letdown on the internal side with corporate governance, with the fact that the people who were doing all this had so many connections within the company. They were able to manipulate all these earnings, and they even created smaller sub-companies where they would send their losses to. And these companies, many didn't, of them actually didn't even exist. They were just even randomly named, and they were organizations that the Enron and the accountants there had created in order to funnel their losses to, so it would make Enron appear more profitable overall, their stock price would keep rising. And a big part of what the executives got out of this was they would get their stock options, they could sell them off at very high prices. Uh, one guy by the name of Wu Pai actually sold off his stock options early before Enron was officially busted for all their fraudulent activities, and he became the second largest landowner in Colorado with all of his profits. And their profits were selling for, or their stock was selling for over a hundred dollars a share, but by the end of the whole thing, it was under a dollar. And that was the problem with recognizing all this revenue early. They were actually in massive debt, but it appeared as if they were not. And what we can really take away from this whole video is that while it's important to have good pressures behind business, it may not necessarily be the best idea to just cut employees uh, because they're not as good as the next. And you're not necessarily going to find better employees out there. They might just have been the lowest at the time, but it puts so much pressure that 
it really drove out ethics within the organization. And Sarbanes Oxley outlines a ton of these rules, like uh, how auditors can only provide audit services services for an organization, and how you have to have internal auditors on your board of directors. And that really strengthened corporate governance, and will hopefully prevent this in the future. Thank you.